It's men's hoops on the ACC Network. The cards are currently sitting at number two in the conference and play host to the 8-8 eight eight Wolfpack. Louisville's won three straight home games, and NC State is looking to change that tune and pick up their second win in ACC play. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Angel Gray alongside the great Dan Bonner. And, Dan, when you're looking at the Cardinals, yes, they are 4-1 four and, one, four and one in ACC play. However, they have taken their fans on quite the journey as far as their up-and-down season. Well, Angel, the first thing you have to understand about Louisville fans is they have very high <laughs> expectations. A lot of people wouldn't consider a 10-5 and five start and half game out of first place in your conference to be a roller coaster season. But here at Louisville, that's the way it is. They never lose home games to non-conference teams in November, but they did to Furman. However, they won their holiday championship against two major conference teams. They won the first game of the ACC on the road at North Carolina State, although they lost to DePaul and Western Kentucky. Then they won three straight ACC games before they lost at Florida State last Saturday. In the last five years, hardly anybody wins at Florida State. The Wolfpack, on the other hand, it hasn't been a roller coaster. It's just been one close game after the other, and the Pack, you know, they probably, they probably figure it's going to go down to the wire tonight. They just have to figure out how to make some shots at the end of a game. We'll see if they can get it done. We'll head courtside for the men in charge on both sides. We'll start with Kevin Keats. Fifth season with the Wolfpack. He's one in three versus Louisville, but he's no stranger to the KFC Yum Center. He actually spent three seasons with Louisville, so he is looking to see if he can improve on that series record. On the other side, Chris Mack in his fourth season at Louisville has led his teams to the NCAA tournament nine out of his 12 seasons. He's a previous national coach of the year. And he just wants to make sure that they continue that streak right at home and push it to four straight at the KFC Yum Center. And we are underway, and right away we got a lot of action on the floor. That's actually going to stay with Louisville. Well, you expect this to be a very intense game. Both of these teams are teams who like to attack. Louisville is an outstanding defensive team. They've struggled to shoot the ball. Uh, North Carolina State, can they like to get up and down. They, they like to use pressure defense. Uh, they have not been as effective in that score as uh, this year as they have been in some previous years. And here they start in the zone. And here are your starters for Louisville. El Ellis will actually replace Noah Locke tonight in the starting lineup for his first start of the season. And Noah, we're said it's not a demotion of any sorts, but simply a move due to Ellis's play as of late. He had 18 points versus Pitt, 14 points versus FSU. So we'll see if he can continue that streak playing very well in ACC play. Now he got the ball in the middle of that zone, and he wasn't able to get the shot. But that's the kind of thing that Ellis can do. He can really take the ball into the lane, put a lot of pressure on the defense. And on the other side for the starting five with NC State, four straight game with this lineup. They feature the league tying highest scoring duo in the ACC with Terquavion Smith, Jericho Hellums, and Derry on Sebron. We're going to see a lot of them tonight. About 46% of their points come from that duo. Outside shot, no good. And now the pack will push it. Wolfpack dodged a bullet right there. You can't afford to turn the ball over against Louisville. Again, Louisville sometimes struggles to put the ball in the basket. You don't want to turn the ball over and give them easy opportunities. Matt Cross will make a lot more of those than he'll miss. Louisville on the defensive end leads the ACC in field goal percentage defense, holding teams to about 39%, but now NC State on the board with two. You're looking at the series history. These two teams are meeting for the second time this season. They saw each other December 4th. Louisville went on a 9-0 run to end the game and walked away with a 73-68 win, and you can see there, Dan, why. Uh, it was a game that Louisville led in the first half and North Carolina State came out smoking in the second half and they just didn't score for the last three minutes of the game. NC State actually had one field goal in the final seven minutes of play. Speaking with Coach Keats, he said, we have to make sure that we just find ways to be more aggressive as that one is actually going to be a goal tin. So count the bucket for Louisville. North Carolina State just a little bit slow getting back that time. Nice job by Louisville to push the ball up the court. Darion Sebron with the basketball is a really tough matchup because he likes to drive the ball to the basket. Takes a couple of guys to keep him away, and he's a great passer as well. 
I love that you said it takes a couple of guys to keep him away. He's only a two-time ACC Player of the Week. And for good reason, he leads the team in almost every category. That shot is no good from Thomas Allen. Lots of times your shooting percentage is a function of the kind of shots you get, and that was not a good shot. This is a good shot. Williams, when you give him that much time and room, he is a very effective three-point shooter. Preseason All-ACC second team, and Coach Keith said the toughest thing about Malik is that he can take you on the inside, but he can also stretch the floor, as we saw just a play ago. Well, he's just very comfortable stepping out, and Dewana is a guy that likes to play back inside because he's a big shot blocker, and Malik Williams is a guy who's going to put some pressure on him because he can step out there and hit that three. Not a high-volume three-point shooter, but he can make him. Now, last couple of games have been a little bit of a struggle. Louisville's not going to win very many games when he only scores four points, which is what happened against Florida State. He did mention that, though, with us just saying that he's more of that inside presence been wanting to balance his game a bit more offensively. We'll see if he can get it done tonight. Another outside shot for the Wolfpack ties the game at all five. That's a good sign for North Carolina State. Jericho Helms is a guy who can shoot the three, and the Wolfpack is much better when he can get that ball to go in the basket. He had a career-high six three-pointers versus La Tech. He's shooting about 38% from that area. As the Wolfpack get this one against Louisville, working it around the perimeter. Thomas Allen tries to get one up. That's fumbled around a bit, and Louisville comes down with the rebound. Jared West passing on side with Malik Williams trying to see what he can get. Spin move over to Juana, and that's no good. That's kicked out of bounds. We'll see which way it goes. It's actually going to stay with the home team. That's really good defense by Dewana, but he wasn't able to control the basketball. He was one-on-one -on -one against Malik Williams, and he won that particular battle, but Louisville's going to get the ball back. Ken Hayes will check in for the Wolfpack. And Thomas Allen will take a trip to the bench. We have another substitute for State. Casey Morsel comes in. It's a Quavion Smith, the all-star freshman who has just been unbelievable. Coach called him lights out on the floor. And Samuel Williamson can't get that one to fall. And this is where Darian Sebron is so dangerous. <laughs> he takes the ball off the board and then just runs it up the court. I already mentioned that he is just leading this team in points, rebound, assists, and steals as the outside shot goes down for Jericole, Jericho Hellums. That's the second one of the night. Well, we mentioned Helms is outstanding, only shooting about 32% in ACC play, but he's a guy that can make three-point baskets in bunches and get hot from out there. And here Louisville, or excuse me, North Carolina is against Louisville State, stays in this, in this zone. Jared West can't respond with the three of their own, and that's going to go out of bounds. And as they take a break, we will do the same right now. The Wolfpack taking care of business. Jericho Helms with the three in distance. You can count it. We have a few scoring trios in the ACC. Well, this game features one of them. NC State has C. Ron Helms and Smith as one of those trios that actually is tied for the highest in conference as far as points laid out per night. And what so far are you seeing from them and how you want to get them more involved, Dan? Well, Sebron has to get going for North Carolina State. He's only taken one shot so far. And in the first time these two teams played, they held Sebron to 11 points that they, they Louisville did. They did a really nice defensive job against him, just contesting everything. Let's see 
Katie Bear is on the season, averaging about 20 points per game, close to a double-double, actually. Just a hair off of the double-double for rebounds at 9.8. Nice rebound by Louisville. Malik Williams corrals it down. Ray Davis passes it on the inside. That one rolls around the rim. But Louisville has a second opportunity. That look from outside is cash by Noah Locke. Well, Louisville, when they can get Matt Cross rebounded, Matt Cross is a sneaky good offensive rebounder. And he's the one who got him that extra opportunity. That's something that they want to do more of, just staying dialed in and finishing the play. That's what we're hearing from the squad. It's in that eight all outside shot. It's been a game of a lot of threes so far as Malik Williams comes down with another rebound and playing a little bit of point guard as he's coming up the floor. In conference play, each of these teams gets an awful lot of their points from behind the three-point arc, but neither one is particularly a great three-point shooting team. They need to get the ball inside to be most effective. So Jackson on the other side for Ernest Ross, and you have a foul that's going to be on the play. So Casey Morcell picks up his first personal foul. Louisville will get it the full length of the floor. Well, Kevin Keats knows as if, to, if his team is going to pull out a win tonight, they have to be able to score on plays like that. You push the ball up the court. You don't let Louisville set the defense. Those are the kind of balls that have to go in the basket for the Wolfpack. And Ebenezer Dewana comes in for Ernest Ross. And you mentioned it, just how important it is to score in transition. You've spoken with us as well about the little things that his team has to do as we're seeing a little bit of pressure from the Wolfpack in the full court. And of course, Kevin Keats, he likes to play the style where you pressure and get steals and get out in transition. He's a little limited this year in terms of his personnel. Well, Noah Locke coming off of the bench and is just on fire to start. Six back-to-back -back points for Locke. Now, no matter what defense you're playing, you got to find Noah Locke. He is the one guy that's a knockdown shooter, or can be, for this Louisville Cardinal team. He's only fifth in the ACC in threes made, Dan, so we'll see if he can continue with the hot hand. He comes down with the rebound, or close to it. That's actually going to go to Louisville either way. And with the hot hand of Locke, they do have the three-point lead over State. Again, Locke is a guy, they recruited him here to be a three-point shooter. He's an outstanding three-point shooter in, at Florida and can't, comes in here as a transfer. And that's why they brought him in, so he could make threes. The Cardinals very, very anxious to improve their three-point shooting. Spent three seasons at the University of Florida. And was on a tear there from the three-point line as well as there's some contact on the baseline. It's actually going to be called a charge. So NC State will get the ball back. Madrid Davis is an ultra competitive guy. And he found that he thought he saw a lane to the basket, and he's going to try to take that. Nice job by North Carolina State to cut him off. Well, you know, Coach, just the balance in finding when to pull up and then also when to get to the basket. He has one of those games that is very aggressive to the rim, but just knowing when and where to pick your poison. See, Davis is outside. matched up against Sebron, and that's a really good matchup, forces a turnover. Another turnover for the pack. A lot of movement for Louisville on the inside. Mason Faulkner, and then Davis for the finish. Faulkner has really played well of late. He does a really nice job. Louisville's very, very good in the backcourt. They've got a lot of guys who can really play. That outside shot no good for State. And so far, Louisville's on a tear. It's coming from the three-point line. Lock letting it fly. Knocks down another three. Off the bench. Because we some champions. We achieve. What could it be done? Because we number one. To start, they were 0-3. Now they're sitting at 3-6, and six, shooting 50% from the three-point line. Dan, I'd say that's a nice thing compared to their season average. It sure is. And keep in mind that the first time these two teams met, Louisville 
build a 14-point halftime lead. And one of the reasons they did it is they made seven three-point baskets in the first half of that game in Raleigh. And again, this is a Louisville team that's one of the top defensive squads in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And if they can shoot the three, they suddenly become very dangerous. And while we're talking about their defense, they have limited Darion Sebron to no field goals and only one field goal attempt. So not only have they been making threes, but their defense has been up to the task as well. Absolutely. On the other side with Sebron, he can just be a tear. And it's definitely one of those players that we highlighted coming into this game. Can definitely light it up. He had 32 points versus FSU, 39 points and 19 rebounds in the four overtime win as well. So he has nine double doubles on the season. We'll see if he can get going in this game. Withers trying to work his way on the baseline, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. If you're a coach, you don't want to see the ball stuck that long in one player's hand, I'm assuming. Boy, and that really was stuck. <laughs> 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 and Casey Morcel made sure it was stuck. He almost stole it three or four different times. You can see the frustration on the sideline with Chris Mack, just wanting that ball movement more from the squad. As they are down five to Louisville. It's a short shot to Quavion Smith. Well, Smith, Another. of course, in that game, in their last game against Clemson, he was 0 for 7. And that's his first field goal attempt of the night as well. So their top two scorers struggling a little bit. Only Helms has produced for them. And we mentioned that off the top of the broadcast, just how dynamic that trio is coming into this game and just what they've been able to do in the ACC as well. So we'll see if they can get some adjustments going. And going back to that last game against Clemson, Dan, Kevin Keats said, okay, you can be 0 for 7 from the field, but you can't be 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Find a way to get other things involved in your game. <laughs> and that's very good advice, sometimes particularly with young players that don't understand that when they're not scoring, they can help their team in other ways. NC State looking for a way to end this drought. They have not scored in their last seven possessions. A lot of action at the rim there. Luana can't get it corralled in. And great defense for Louisville if they get that one on the other side. Well, Louisville noted for that pack line style of defense. And basically what that is is you pressure the ball, but you keep your man in front of you. You try to deny that dribble penetration. And so far, Louisville has done that extremely well in this game. It's not only Darion Sebron that hasn't been able to get in there on the dribble. Nobody else on the team has either. And you talked about how Louisville leads the ACC in field goal percentage defense at 39. Well, 23% that they're holding NC State at this point. And the turnover for the cards. Some transition going. Lots of times when you turn it over, it denies you the opportunity to set your defense, but the cards got back very, very well that time. Outside shot by Helms. And you said they want to get him going. Well, he's let that one fly. Well, they, they have four field goals in the game, and he's got three of them. Three threes. Nine points leads the pass in points. And a quick response by Curry. Tawana just got lost on that screen and roll. Thomas Allen all the way to the bucket, finds a way to score amongst the trees. Wolfpack needs to turn it up defensively. Well, that's back-to-back -back buckets by the Wolfpack coming out of the break. I can only imagine what the message was from Kevin Keats. And getting his team fine-tuned from the offensive side. Not another offensive board for Louisville. This time, they don't convert. However, they will be able to step up to the free throw line. That foul is going to go against Sidney Curry. Excuse me, actually, Dewana. That's five offensive rebounds already in this game for Louisville. All 
right? Well, every Thursday at 10 Eastern, right after our women's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every women's game and look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. That's insight you can only get one place right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. That one rolled around just a bit. That one will fall for Dre Davis as we get another substitution, Jared West, coming in the game. Well, Dre Davis is one of those guys who is struggling a little bit. Not struggling, that's the wrong word, but he's trying to find his role. He comes off the bench. Sometimes he plays a lot. Sometimes he doesn't play as much. But he just he's a guy that goes out there and works hard every time. And he's been a factor here early in the game. You mentioned just trying to find his balance. Well, the sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana, came off the bench for the first time of the season at Georgia Tech. Looking to see what he can do as far as the consistency. As that's a nice bucket for State in Iwana. Wow, that's two baskets inside by Dewana now. He's not noted for his scoring ability there. In fact, he's already exceeded his average per game total in ACC play with those two baskets. Which that is, is a buttons. big help for NC State if they can get that going inside. And that seems to be the difference in their approach, too. We talked about the drought that the Wolfpack had on the offensive end, and since then, and since shooting from the outside, they've actually centered in on Dewana. Well, but that's not Dewan. That was actually Ross. They were giving Dewan <laughs> credit for it. Dewan scored one basket in there. Ross was the guy who got that one. So double trouble right now for Louisville on the inside. A nice dish off to Williams underneath. Fakes a bit. We'll be able to draw the foul. Malik Williams will step to the free throw line. That's the third team foul. And that's going to go against Hellum, his first personal foul. Two-point lead for Louisville. Bull sits at number 14 in the ACC in three-point field goal percentage. And NC State sits at number 13. So it's a big bonus to each of these teams to be knocking it down from three. Another thing to consider is that Louisville, they generally, well, they play nine guys, 12 minutes or more in ACC play, and they've already played 10 players in this game. So depth has another outside shot. We'll just add that one to the next package that we have coming out of break. That one's good. Well, that's Helms again, and pretty soon the Louisville coaching staff is going to remind their players that they really should guard him. I already mentioned the six three-pointers that he had against La Tech, 31 for his career high. So you definitely have to find Helms on the floor. Pat coming out. Darion Sebron dishes it out. Another three. Terquavion Smith is now on the board. And Smith is a guy who can get very, very hot from out there. And you saw what's the effect that Sebron can have on a game. He just finds ways to get everyone involved, not just the leading scorer, but the glue for this team as well. Malik Williams can't get the tip in, and State has really been pushing in transition. Traquavion Smith can't connect on that one. Gets the rebound, dishes it underneath. Bounces around a bit, but Thomas Allen with the two. Fast we're, we're going a little game. bit too fast right at the moment. You can see the pace has picked up quite a bit. Nice Another pass. Another nice inside look. Ernest Ross for two. So here comes State out of the gate with a nice run. Here in the trio, he has 12 points. The rest of the team, 13. But I have a feeling that Terquavion Smith and Darion Sebron are going to get in on the action pretty soon here, Dan. Well, and Sebron has already been in on the action, Angel, because uh, this recent run by North Carolina State, I think, has been keyed by Sebron's ability to push the ball up the court and pass. He draws so much attention. He's already got four assists in this half, most of them coming in this last little stretch here. Great point. He also has four rebounds to add to that as well. He's only taken one shot on the night. Become more of a facilitator in this matchup. Well, the Collins is only three for 13 inside the arc. 
mishandle at the top of the key, Malik Williams. That was doomed from the beginning. As he fumbled around with the ball a little bit. There's going to be a stoppage of play. We'll see which way it goes. So they credited the steal to Smith. But it's a personal foul that's going to go against Malik Williams. That's his first of the night. Well, that actually wasn't a bad foul because it, <laughs> they prevented the easy basket. Absolutely. And for the Wolfpack, they're on a 10-0 run at this point. And coming back from that break, you mentioned Sebron getting everyone involved. It's Cravion Smith. Some buckets. We're seeing a balanced attack from the state. Allen working it around. You see another outside shot. Well, that's Jaquavion Smith. And as I said, when he gets hot, he can get very hot. And he's knocked down two in a row. Well, let's mention the 6 for 10 that State is shooting from distance at this point. 60% on the night. Malik Williams didn't take much time to let that one fly. It's short. But they do get another offensive rebound. Now, one of the keys to this North Carolina State run is they prevented that for a few trips down the court. What has happened, Angel, during this run is that Louisville has not been able to get the ball to go in the basket. And on these missed shots, North Carolina State getting the ball in the person of Sebron and just pushing it up the court, really putting some pressure on the Louisville defense. And then the Wolfpack is making some outside shots. And Dan, how about this? We mentioned how tough Louisville's defense can be, but the Wolfpack have shown and strung together a couple of defensive series where they've made it very difficult and actually made Louisville shoot very late in the shot clock. Well, the way Kevin Keats would like his teams to play is to apply defensive pressure. Distance from Smith, and you said he could get hot quick. You weren't lying. But you're going to have to find him because you can't let him, particularly when he's shooting the ball like that, to give him that much room. Look at that, a 16-0 run in the last 246. And Smith, during that time, has three three-point baskets. Just a few moments ago, literally maybe two minutes ago, Smith was held scoreless. Now he has three threes on the night, nine points, three for five from the field. Now Louisville really needs a basket here. Louisville shooting 30% from the floor. That one can't fall for Curry. And once again, a stoppage of play. That's going to be a foul going against the Cards. Matt Cross picked up the foul that time. But again, I'm not sure that was that bad a foul. You don't want to commit that foul, of course. But it looked like NC State, they were going to get the opportunity to get out and go again. And when you keep missing shots, you allow North Carolina State to play in transition. And that's where the Wolfpack wants to play. Now, Dan, even with the Wolfpack making shots, it seems like their sense of urgency and pushing in transition has changed a bit as well. Well, Louisville goes into a zone here to try to change the tempo of this game. And you can see how Faulkner is picking up to Bravion Smith all the way on the outside. That one can't drop for Sebron. Well, Sebron is not a three-point shooter, so that's a break for Louisville if they can get Sebron to shoot from out there. Well, he did shoot a couple against Clemson the other night. I think he opened the game with a three, and they left him outside for a reason, as you mentioned, not a three-point shooter, as that one rims around a bit for Smith. Now, you got to pick your poison against all these players like this, and Sebron is a guy, if he's going to shoot the three, well, okay, you can live with that. Well, what about the dish on the inside for Matt Cross? But... They're climbing uphill right now. Wolfpack shooting it from distance, making it inside too. Balance attack for State. To the KFC Yum Center. Well, the Wolfpack up 13 over the cards. And you want to talk about what the cards have done offensively. They are 0 for 7 in their last few possessions. So, Dan, what's been the difference in their offense to this point? Well, early in the game, Angel, when they missed shots, and they've missed a lot of them because they're only shooting 27%, they were able to get offensive rebounds. They had five offensive rebounds early, so they were able to score. 
But NC State has cleaned that up in the last 10 possessions. Louisville doesn't have any points. They're scoreless in the last four minutes and six seconds. And as they miss shots, North Carolina State has been able to rebound the ball, and particularly Darion Sebron. He gets it, and up the court he goes. And that has really put some pressure on the Louisville defense. They haven't been able to set the defense, and as a result, North Carolina State has been very productive offensively. You said during the break, Louisville has to attack and get to the rim as well. You can see them stepping to the free throw line here, and Sidney Curry will step up for two. Zero points in the last 10 possessions, so it is nice to see them drop one on the scoreboard on this trip. Well, Curry is a guy, big, strong kid. He can go inside, and here's what we're talking about. There's an offensive rebound, and that's something that uh, they they started with early, and they had well, haven't been able to do that in a while. And as the officials are talking it over, they're talking about whether it's an over and back violation. We'll judge by the reaction from players on which side it'll go. Didn't take very long. Well, actually, they're. I'm going to say Louisville turnover. We'll take a look here at what was going on. Hmm. Well, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you know, Louisville, <laughs> they, they handled that poorly because you're allowed to get a rebound in the backcourt. That's not an over-and-back violation. Exactly. Very interesting call there. Either way, pack at the ball. It's another stoppage of play. So that's a foul that's going to go against Louisville. Well, I wasn't really able to tell what happened there, Angel. It's possible that Locke got the ball in the front court. And if you do that and then step into backcourt, then, of course, it's an over-and-back violation. And I think that's what the officials call. Inside look and a beautiful look at the rim. Now, we talked about Dewana before, and <laughs> that time it was Dewana <laughs> being able to get inside. And between he and Ross, they have a total of eight points in the first half, and that is really a big lift for North Carolina State. You mentioned it before, Dewana already passing his season average. He's perfect from the field, but an emphatic dunk from Louisville. And, and Louisville, I think that's where they have to go. You've got to keep pressure on North Carolina State. You've got to attack on the inside. You saw Curry get to the free throw line a couple of possessions ago, and that time Dre Davis with a really strong move on the inside. Sometimes it just takes one big play to get things going. Hopefully that was the one for Louisville. Prevents the Wolfpack from scoring on this possession. Inside look. And that's a back-to-back -back bucket. Angel, it's, it's like what we talked about in reverse. Sebron missed a three-point basket. And when North Carolina State is going to miss shots, particularly when they miss threes and create long rebounds, that allows Louisville to get out and go. Well, this game is all about runs. Louisville, they're coming down 10 to NC State. by 13 they made it a 10 point game but it just seems like they found a few answers on the offensive end to this point and that's where they had to find some answers because you've got to play well on the offensive end to give yourself a chance to get back defensively when you when you run good offense when you get good shots even if you miss your guys have a chance for offensive rebounds but you also have an opportunity to get back in balance defensively and get your defense set. And that's what they didn't do for a long stretch in the first half. Dan, for both coaches, they always say how it has to be done by committee. We all already talked about Dewan and what he's given the Wolfpack. Well, how about Curry? Five points so far, two for three from the field, and he's already passed the season average of about two points per game. So the foul will be called on the play. Well, that's Dre Davis running the court again. Really a nice pass by Matt Cross. But Louisville has been able to get out and go. And generally when you can play in transition, you can get easier opportunities. So no shot point. there. Foul on the floor. But to your point, Dan, it just seems too like both teams are doing a better job in transition defense. Zero fast break points. 
on both ends. Well, Angel, I've always been of the opinion that there is no such thing as transition defense. If the other guys mm. get out of transition, you're in big <laughs> trouble. So you have to prevent that transition. You prevent that transition by making baskets. We saw the, a few of the fouls that were given up from the Louisville side just to prevent that from getting going. That shot no good from Locke, but an aggressive play to the rim will send him to the free throw line. And that's what we also talked about, Angel, that Louisville was a little bit passive there during that stretch when North Carolina State made the big run. And Curry is somebody who was attacking inside. Dre Davis has certainly attacked inside. And now Noah Locke drives the ball to the goal. And that's a little different look than we saw him right out of the gate. Coming off of the bench, he had back-to-back -back threes for Pack for Louisville. Rather, and he's now just scoring his first point since the opening minutes for him. Now his role basically is as a three-point shooter, but he can also do other things. And once you start making threes, you draw the defense to you, and he can get by and get to the get to the goal, draw fouls. And here Louisville again with that zone defense that has sort of slowed North Carolina State down. A little bit of standing around for the Wolfpack. Louisville in a 6-0 run as we're approaching about the 90-second mark in this first half. What a play by Dre Davis going over to get that rebound, and they'll actually get the ball on the other side as that's a foul that's going to go against Hellums. Well, coming up at halftime for our State Farm, we'll revisit the Duke win over Wake Forest, and we'll update you on the Commonwealth Clash. So everyone in the studio will, studio will have that taken care of as we are looking to close this one out in the half, about 1.30 left before that is done. Missed the one and one for Davis. And you can feel the momentum shift for the cards. Yeah, back to the man-to-man -man goes cards. Hayes at the top of the key. Can't get anything there. He dishes it off to Allen. That one can't fall, and another rebound is actually going to go to Curry. Now North Carolina State made some threes, but remember who was making the threes? It was Helms, and it was it was Smith. And so you've got other guys shooting threes now, and those balls not going in the goal. How about the aggression from Curry out of the gate? Nothing was gotten into him. You got to believe Chris Mack is loving what he's seeing from Curry to this point. Well, they list Curry at 260 pounds, and he's attacking Ross, who they list at 290 pounds. <laughs> so there's quite an advantage in bulk right there and here. And go back to this zone defense, which has really disrupted North Carolina State. Louisville is, was down by as many as 13. It's a two-possession game, a lot of activity at the top of the key. That one's let go by Hayes. That hits the back iron. NC State trying to come up with it. Louisville running in transition the skip hop and that's rejected at the rim here you go Dan transition points for the Wolfpack that's kind of turn around there big big block by Ross a last second heave and that's not gonna go for Louisville we've had an entertaining half so far but NC State with the 35-27 lead over the cards we'll see if the cards have some answers coming back in the second half Welcome to the State Farm Halftime Report. What's up, folks? NC State up eight at the break. That's KJ Smith. I'm Dallin Cuff. KJ always reminding me just by looking at you. I've got to dress up better when I'm on <laughs> set with you. i got to remember that from now on. Uh, what have you seen so far? NC State really wrestle control. This 16-0 run in just under three minutes, the latter part of that first half. What was the difference? Well, there's two teams that are coming off of a loss, but only one coach made adjustments coming into this game, and that's Kevin Keats. Um, NC State came out in this game playing a 2-3 zone, um, and they also did press, and, and they're pressuring the ball, and they're creating turnovers, which is giving their players confidence on offense to make threes. They're one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the ACC, but they have seven threes in the first half. 
Now the big thing for them is not to get trigger happy because you don't want to just rely on the three because you can live and die by the three. Yeah, you mentioned the threes were huge because they made shots, but it helped their defense. Obviously, your offense is connected to your defense. They got back, they got set, and Louisville started playing in their hands. Louisville quick triggered a couple times, and when NC State can play at rhythm and start to have a little pace to their game, they're better, uh, knocking down those shots, and then 13 points off turnovers. Louisville has to clean that up, uh, and they controlled the pace in the first half of the half, but not in the second half of the half. Forward in the halftime, we're going to get you more highlights. Three other games, two other games in action, one other already in the books. Eight-point lead for NC State at the break. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome back, NC State with 35 to 27 lead over Louisville. We're about moments away from starting the second half. Louisville went on a bit of a run to close out the half. However, NC State has been shooting lights out from beyond the arc. Right now they're shooting 43% from the three-point line. At one point they were shooting over 60%. Dan, what else stands out to you? Well, I think that Louisville, that 8-2 run was really important. The Cardinals have struggled shooting the ball. They've turned it over nine times. You see North Carolina State with 13 points off of those nine Louisville turnovers. Uh, the biggest thing for Louisville is they've got 21 of their 27 points coming off the bench. So that has been a big factor. And for North Carolina State, I really believe if you would have told Kevin Keats before the game, you say, okay, look here, Coach Keats, it's going to be halftime. Darion Sebron is only going to have one field goal, only two points, and yet you're still going to be ahead by eight points. He was going to say, okay, let's start the game right there. He would take that. So it's a it's a big deal for North Carolina State that they've been able to build this lead with so little contribution in terms of scoring from Sebron, although Sebron was outstanding. Five rebounds, four assists in that first half. He's the guy who I think really got NC State going during their big run midway through the first half. And if you want to stay on state side, Ravion Smith, nine points, all of them coming from the three-point line. Helms had a really nice start, 12 points, four threes for him as well. But to your point, you mentioned everyone that needs to step up beyond the big three for NC State. Dewana and Ross are averaging five points in ACC play. They already have eight points, so it has to be done by committee. And it's, it's North Carolina State really would like to have an offensive capability on the interior in the low post. That's something Manny Bates would have given them and that's something they've missed all year long. But they had it in the first half. You mentioned the bench contribution for Louisville. Right now they're winning in that department 21 to four. To go back to this last meeting between the two teams, Louisville's bench outscored the Wolfpack 28 to zero. That's a short shot, Louisville. Comes down in transition. Now, when Louisville's been able to set their defense, that defense has been pretty good. Luke Williams. Luke Williams has had an odd game. He only scored four points in the first half, fumbled the ball around a little bit. And it's been at the top of the key, too, Dan, where he's had some troubles as Wolfpack once again in transition. And the easy two for Allen. Well, what a great pass again by Darren Seaborn. This is a guy who's one of the leading scorers in the ACC. He only has two points in the game, but he's not looking for his own points. He's looking for the best shot, and he created it with a really nice pass. Second in the ACC in rebound, third in scoring. There's That's another the turnover. Nice transition defense for Louisville, but you can't do much with that. A nice take for State. And yet another turnover right now, NC State. Really showing what they got out of the break. Well, Helms just does a nice job. I think he surprised Sam Williamson. Williamson went straight up and down, and you have to continue to move your feet, and Helms with a nice job just spins around him. And again, that's a situation where Louisville doesn't have their defense set, and so North Carolina State has been able to operate very effectively under those circumstances. We talked about the bench points for Louisville. Well, when the bench is scoring a lot of points, that means your starters aren't. 
Sam Williamson started the game. He hasn't scored. L. Ellis hasn't scored. Malik Williams with only four. Matt Cross with two. They're the only two starters who have scored in the game. Outside look for NC State, no good. And to your point, Jericho Williams that is leading the pack with 14 points. Stop the play. Well, Helms just picked up a foul there. That's his second personal foul. And that's a nice job by Locke to push the ball up the court. You have to push the ball up the court under control. Though. That last possession over, they pushed the ball up the court, but they were out of control, and they turned it over. And here's Jared West. He hadn't scored in the game either. Actually, he's taken one shot on the night. Going back to fouls. Only two players on both squads that are sitting at two. That's Marcel as well as Helms. Smith so speedy gets a step in the paint and the nice English off the glass. That kid is so clever with the basketball. So Smith with 11 points, four for eight from the field. That's his really first good start bucket. to the second half by the Wolfpack. Smith's first bucket that is not a three. He picked up the foul there. So West has drawn a couple of fouls here just by pushing the ball in there. So Quavion Smith is going to get his second foul. A little frustrated with that. It was pointing to the bench and patting his chest. You can see there, three to zero as far as the fouls called NC State. Well, he picked up two fouls within one second. Back door, and that's denied by Helen. Helen's really doing a nice job coming over to help out. Allen thought he had a lane that closed very quickly. And he's going to reset, passes it off to Brock Seabrock. Well, DeWanna thought he had an advantage inside against West, and he did. They weren't able to get it to him. Helms turns down the three. And there's going to be another foul that's going to be called. This one will go against Louisville for their first of the half. Well, that time Locke is trying to go inside. Battling against Dewana. And Dewana is 6 feet 11. Locke is Locke, 6 feet 3. Locke. So good job that time by North Carolina State to find the mismatch and get the foul. Seabron asking for the pick on the wing. Finds another lane on the left side and another finish for Seabron. When he's coming off that screen, you have to stop him. If that means possibly giving a chance to Dewana, then that's what you have to do. NC State coming out of the break with an 8-0 run. Right now, 43-27 over Louisville. Turning score, Jericho Hellas is having himself a nightmare. Well, he averages 14 points a game on the season, and he made four three-point baskets in the first half. So that got him pretty well on his way to his season average. So he knocked down those threes. In the second half, he's hit a layup. He's blocked two shots. He has a couple of assists. He has a steal. So he has played a complete game for the North Carolina State Wolfpack, and he's needed to because Darian Sebron only has four points in the game. Well, if you're looking at the numbers in his career, you can understand why Kevin Keats says he's the most consistent leader they have. He talks about his work ethic as well as he knocks down a bucket. But just speaking to him, he's improved every season. Five points in his freshman year, nine, sophomore, 12, and then 14 in his senior season. And Coach Keats said it's become because of the work that he puts in the gym. That was a big three by Noah Law. and fade away jumper. Wow, that was a tough shot. Nothing wrong with that defense. That makes it a 15 point lead for the Wolfpack. Three. 
a quick response for Louisville. They needed that one. But really nice job by Dre Davis on the inside. He was mismatched against Allen. And there West comes up with the steal. Sloppy ball handling by North Carolina State. And just and like usually, that. Usually when you come back in the game, you do it with your defense. Louisville's been able to do so. They have 11 turnovers, but so far the back-to-back -back buckets have come. And you can see another turnover for State. They're trying to scrap it out, and they finally do. West skip pass. And you can see a lot of the contact that was at the half court. Marcel tried to see if he can get an easy two on the other end. That's going to be a foul going against the cards. We got a good one so far. Levin over Louisville, but let's take a look at the bench contribution for both teams. Louisville 26 to 4 over State, but I think the good part of that is because Locke came off the bench for the first time this season. Right now he's sitting at 11 points. Now Locke has been a big factor off the bench, but also coming off the bench. Curry's got seven points. Dre Davis has eight points. And you mentioned earlier just how much they need from their starters, though. Eight points. I'm not sure if Coach is too happy or thrilled with the production that he's seeing from his starters. Well, again, they play a lot of guys. Uh, they've already played 10 guys in the game. They play nine guys on the season, 15 minutes or more. So he's got a lot of options. And when you have options and something's not working, you try something else. Now, just before it went to break, that foul was actually called on Casey Morcell. So that means Morcell now has three personal fouls. And Traquavion Smith for North Carolina State also has three personal fouls. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as we move through this second half. And as we saw, Smith actually picked up two fouls within a second of one another. Ten on the shot clock. And that's the bunch that you want to see from Curry. And that's a really good move by Curry Davis. He's the one that got it in there, drew the defense, and Curry just went to find an open spot. But Dre Davis has really made some big contributions coming off the bench. That's three assists in the game now for Davis. The Cardinals have responded every time North Carolina State has threatened to pull away. An empty possession for the pack. Let's see if Louisville can get back to back buckets and who else? Curry with another one. And again, Curry, they list him at 260 pounds, and he has quite the muscle advantage on the inside against North Carolina State. So a really good move by Louisville to get the ball down inside to him. And he has another season high. His previous one was eight points and eight rebounds versus Pitt. Right now he's sitting at 11 points, six rebounds. And when Louisville can score, that allows them to get down and set their defense. And when they've been able to set their defense, the North Carolina shoot, state shooting percentage has not been optimal. Jay Davis with the rebound. That's his fourth. A nice take on the inside. He's bumped. So Faulkner will take a trip to the free throw line. Talked about uh, being able to get down on the inside. And Curry, <laughs> Just, that's some power right there. Taking the ball to the goal. As we mentioned, Curry, they list him at 6 feet 8, 260. Duana, they list him at 225, so that's a substantial weight advantage there. And Curry really making a big contribution, playing hard. It's very interesting, even going against Florida State, he had six points and six rebounds. is isn't really known for his scoring ability, but you can see a sense of urgency in his eyes in his play on the offensive end. And that ball got away from Dre Davis. And that's a turnover. You don't want to turn it over, but that is not the disaster that some of the turnovers have been because Louisville will be able to set the defense. And NC State just that they haven't played as well against the set defense as they have in transition. Well, those with 12 turnovers on the night. Right now, the pack taking care of the ball. Only six turnovers. Yeah, but they've had a tough time getting good shots against the set defense. And there's Sebron again. 
draw on the defense, and that goes to Dewana. He's got six points in the game now. He's been the player that you said keep our eyes on. He's not only has six points, but he's perfect from the field. A quick response. Makes it a seven-point game for Louisville. Nice job by Locke. He said he's noted as a three-point shooter, but he's taken the ball, the ball to the goal a couple of times. Going over top of the key. aggressive there by Dre Davis. But you can feel them trying to get back into the game, Dan, and just the pressure that we were seeing from them so far in the second half when the Wolfpack actually came out of the half on a bit of a run. I think, you know, you take that. Uh, you take aggressiveness. Yeah, that wasn't a great foul, but you like the aggressiveness. So right now, NC State has three players with three personal fouls. That's Smith, Helms, and Marcel. But no worries. The Guavion Smith with another three makes it a 10-point game. But well, there's no defense for that. Well, he's going to bounce around with the ball out there and just rise up and shoot a deep three. You can't really do anything about that. Ray Davis in the paint. Nice touch. Gets it to roll. And now Louisville has made their last eight points in the paint. So Louisville has made their last seven field goals. So they've been very efficient so far. But it's gone back and forth. And again, no. very good shots. And that Turk Curry, that's not just going to get them. So right now, Louisville trying to work their way back in this one. Down eight, seeing if they can close this one out. Point lead over Louisville. And you can see the change in the lineup with Noah Lott coming off of the bench. L. Ellis got the first start of the season. He's right now at zero points for the night. Well, Chris Mack looking to change things up a little bit. L. Ellis had been playing very well coming off the bench, and he's not able to get it going tonight. But again, I mean, with that backcourt they have, Jared West, Noah Locke, L. Ellis, Mason Faulkner, they've got guys who have, have shown they can score, guys who have shown they can score at their previous stops and at this stop as well. So Louisville's got a lot of options in the backcourt and they've been able to use them effectively tonight. It's very interesting too for L. Ellis. He had 14 points off of the bench against Florida State. Well, each team shooting the ball very, very well. NC State shooting 64% in the second half. Louisville at 70%. What a doctor thrust for Louisville. Well, Curry just did a nice job finding, following the ball and finding an open area. That drive to the basket drew the defense. Curry found the open spot, and he continues to be outstanding on the inside. And build on his season high. That's going to be actually not a tie-up, but going the other way. But Curry is having himself a night. Well, the drive to the basket. And that's Faulkner. Gets in there. You can see him draw three defenders. And Dewan is a guy that tries to block everything. So when he's going to go after the ball, all you got to do if you're Curry is find the spot that Dewana vacated, and you're going to get a chance at an offensive rebound, and he took advantage. How about Curry only missing one shot on the night? And there's Sebron taking it in. Nice job by Sebron to avoid the potential charge. And with that bucket, State makes it a double figure scoring once again. Louisville's tried to string a couple of possessions together as Curry goes right on the inside and it's been his night. <laughs> Dewana tried to guard him and bounced off. He bounced off about five feet. I'm not too sure if Chris Mack knew that Curry would be his leading scorer on the night coming into this game. Well, when you have as many guys who are as talented as Lewin has, you have the luxury that you never know who's going to be your leading school. 
Steve Ron was going one on two. Curry came in for the help. But there's actually going to be a foul that's called on the play. Uh, Jared West, it's hard, it's going to be hard for Jared West to, got, to guard Sebron close to the basket. But if Jared West is on him, it's going to be hard for Sebron to get close to the basket. Sebron that time was able to get a post up and grab foul. West exits the game. He has two personal fouls. I mentioned before, Sebron doing a lot for his team. He has five rebounds, five assists. Six points. He is this team's leading scorer as Curry gets a much deserved break. I'm pretty sure we'll see him pretty soon down the line. Maybe he got away with the backcourt there. No, you're allowed to throw the ball in the backcourt. <laughs> well, it's where he caught it. Uh, <laughs> the coach was going back and forth. Man-to-man -man defense for the Wolfpack. Locke trying to work something. He dishes it off for three, and Ellis finally on the board. So, Dan, sometimes you just got to talk him up. Ellis with his first points of the night. Hunter Quavion Smith answers right back. <laughs> I'm telling you, when Smith gets going, he is hard to contain. Smith shooting over 60% from the field. You already mentioned the four threes that he's had on the night. He's averaging 18 points since joining the starters, especially in ACC play. And that's going to be a charge going the other way. A foul Foster on the floor. does a really nice job getting the ball in the lane. We just showed you in the last replay that Faulkner was able to get it in there, draw the defense, so Curry was able to get a basket. That time, Faulkner just on the attack. Draws the foul. Faulkner, a 77% free throw shooter. Misses the first of two. Now another interesting stat here in this game, the North Carolina State Wolfpack, one of the leading teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference in terms of making free throws. They have not been to the free throw line tonight. He's bringing the ball up, finding a lane, rejected at the rim. Helms gets a second chance opportunity. Sebron working it around. Smith, another one. Sebron, again, doing a great job getting the ball moving. Smith now has 21 points. And five threes on the night. Of his own. Faulkner established that he could drive the ball to the basket, so he play off of him a little bit, and he drains the three. So it's only fitting that we have a six differential in this score at this point. misses point blank trying to see if he can get something on the reverse on the other side Sebron we'll see if that one counts right now it's been all from the three point line rating threes Faulkner line him up we'll break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of every game and look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. That's insight you can only get one place right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. As far as the Louisville cards, they want to see more from Curry because how about his night? 15 points so far. You see a season average. He's delivering, Dan. Well, you look at that on the season. He's 14 for 20 from the field. <laughs> and tonight he's 7 for 8. He's also got 7 rebounds. And you can see there, he only plays, we said they, that they play an ACC play, they play nine guys more than 12 minutes a game, and he's not one of those guys. So somebody who waits his turn, and when he has an opportunity, he's ready to take advantage. That's what you need on a team where you're going to play a lot of guys. 
Not everybody's going to be hot every night, but Curry's one of those guys who's hot tonight. Curry, one of three players for Louisville in double figures, along with Locke and Davis. Well, Curry just picked up the foul there. going to be his third personal foul. No one's sitting with foul trouble for Louisville. He's the only player with three. It's only the fourth offensive rebound of the evening for North Carolina State. And North Carolina State, number one in the ACC in offensive rebounds per game. You see the take to the bucket by Sebron, and he's getting things going, not just a facilitator in the second half. And that's the problem that you have when you've got a great scorer like Sebron. He's apt to go off at any time. You see right below, Louisville started the half 0-3 since then, shooting 11 for 12 from the field. On the inside, Curry denied at the rim. But they'll actually stop play. Looks like Smith and got Smith, hit. Smith slow to get up. I didn't see what happened, but he was in the middle of that scrum. They, they can't afford to lose him. You mentioned he's got three fouls in the game, but he's also got 21 points. Well, he's going to go out for a second here, but he won't be over there long. The officials were quick to stop that one. Our officials on the night, Jamie Lucky, John Gaffney, and Lamar Simpson. Okay, he's not going out of the game. <laughs> so we play on Sebron at the top of your screen. This is a good matchup here, Gray Davis against Sebron. Helms has been a bit quiet in the last few minutes. That bounces around, and that rebound actually comes down to Louisville for Dre Davis. Well, Ross committed a foul, so Dre Davis will be able to go down and shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. That was a really good defensive play by Curry. Ross tried to set a screen to free Sebron, and Curry went with Sebron, and basically they double-teamed him. They didn't worry about Ross. And that's exactly the way you need to handle Sebron. Well, we have a College Hoops triple header for you Saturday on ACC and the ESPN app that starts at 4 Eastern. But we're featuring these two games. The Fighting Irish have won five straight. They're in Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech at 6 Eastern. Then Armando Baycott leads the Tar Heels against Georgia Tech at the Dean Smith Center. Georgia Tech close to getting their first ACC conference play win. They also do have the conference leading scorer in Michael DeVoe. Should be a good one. And we have a great one here as well. North Carolina State has cooled off a little here on the last few possessions. NC State hungry for a win. They've lost six of their last seven games, but they've been lighting it up from outside, trying to close this one out. But there's, there's nothing you can do about that. That was pretty good defense, but that was just fabulous offense. Flavion Smith, 24 points, and the majority of them coming from the three-point line, six of them. Well, Curry's done everything else. He was over there with the writers. Maybe he's going to write a story <laughs> about the game. Or just but give Smith, him a couple how of nuggets. Good has Smith been tonight? And, I mean, he has made some ridiculous shots. Coach Keith said with Smith, he's just one of those players that he doesn't understand what it is to have a bad night. Of course, he struggled from the floor in the previous game against Clemson. But for him, he said he just shows up every night. Well, somebody who's really showed up tonight is Sidney Curry for the cards. He has really been a factor on the inside. Uh, Malik Williams 
Haven't really played that many minutes because Curry has been so good in there, and it's basically all been around the basket. He has been a force on the inside, just being in the right place at the right time, making good catches, using that big body to drive the ball to the basket. Again, follows follows the, the defender trying to block the shot, and that time just the Fox defender out of the way and scores. He has had an outstanding game. Can't say it enough, already has a season high 15 points, seven for nine from the field. It's the way he's been so efficient, Dan, has been pretty impressive. North Carolina State has really not been able to beat anything with him on the inside. He has been dominant both against Ross and Dewana. The problem is Louisville has had almost no answer for, oh, there's a jump ball. That's a really good defensive play. And again, Dre Davis in the middle of that. North Carolina State not handling that. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I would feel about it, too. But Davis, Curry, both making huge contributions off the bench. And let's revisit the bench points. The Cardinals 44 to the Pack's four bench points. West with a nice interior pass to Curry for the flush. Well, that's really a good patient play by West. He drew the big man, Ross and then just waited till Curry cut into the open area. How about this move? Good heavens, behind his back in traffic, going right to Curry. Sebron now with 10 points, six rebounds, five assists. The nine point lead over Louisville. And we fell in the play, but Dan, we have to go back for this amazing finish by Curry. Well, again, Ross goes to the dribbler, and Ross didn't need to go over there. Helm sort of had him under control, but nice job by, again, by West to just wait until Curry cut into the lane. Curry playing with a great deal of confidence. Really nice, patient play by West. And you saw the look on Ernest Ross's face. Didn't want to be a part of that post there. Kind of shied away from getting involved in that one. Dre Davis at the free throw line. He's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. 86% on the season. Might have jinxed him and misses the second. Well, again, the Wolfpack yet to attempt a free throw in this game. And it's very surprising with their aggressive play, especially in the first half. That, that is the case. See Bron trying to find some offense at the top of the key. Finally gets a call. Well, they're going to go against Davis. Though, because that's team foul number eight against Louisville. So both teams in the bonus. Well, that time was very interesting. I thought that Sebron had created a lane to the basket, but as he tried to take advantage of it, his own man, Ross, got in the way. He was lucky to hang on to the ball. So the Sebron, first... with all the other things he does, he is only about a 70% free throw shooter. And misses the first attempt for the Wolfpack from the strike. Yeah, on the stretch, you need all of them, particularly when you're, you're going to win on the road. Joey Davis trying to create some space. This is it off to Locke. Locke has been pretty impressive. 13 points for him. And a foul on the play right now. NC State trying to hold on and walk away with their second win in ACC play.
back up 66 to 58. And for Louisville, they've had a couple of close calls in a lot of their games this season. Wins and losses of 10 points or less. And that's what we're sitting at looking at right now. Well, we showed you as we started the game, the closest games that North Carolina State has played. And that's sort of a been a staple for the most part in ACC competition this year. An awfully lot, an awful lot of hotly contested games. Every once in a while we've had a clunker, but for the most part these games have gone right down to the wire. And you expect this one to go right down to the wire as well. That was a bad foul by the Wolfpack. The shot clock was running out and I'm not sure that Louisville would have been able to get a good shot up. Instead, Noah Locke goes to the line. Who's going back to how close these games have been, not just for Louisville and NC State, but throughout ACC play. And highlighted by tight, by tight games. 18 of the 31 ACC contests this season have been determined by five points or fewer, with 10 decided by one possession. So a lot of close games. It's tough to win in the ACC. Lock, See, not a great free throw shooter misses that one. A great block out by Helms. Sebron at the top of the key for the Wolfpack. Helms from distance, and that was a seat of bucket for Helms. And that's his first three of the second half, and it comes at a great time for the Wolfpack. Lock was trying to force. You gotta pay so much attention to Sebron, somebody's gonna be open. Curry making another move, can't quite finish on that one. A lot of contact as Dre Davis was flying in. And they actually pick up the foul there. Curry that time just got going a little too fast. We've been impressed with the patience he's, he's shown on some other occasions. But that time he thought he had an opportunity and just spun a little too quickly. He was off balance. Now Ernest Ross will actually step up to the free throw line since they are in the bonus. Uh, Some place where he hadn't been a lot this year. He's only five for nine on the season, and this is another front end of the one and one. Wolfpack missed the last one. And again, a little confusion on if it was two or not, but NC State, the two times they've been to the free throw line, haven't been able to knock him down. Yeah, but a great job by Traquavion Smith to come up with that ball. When you get that missed free throw, if you're Louisville, you really would like to get that rebound now. NC State has a chance to run a little clock. Under three minutes to play, and that's going to be an offensive foul that's going to go against Ross. Well, Ross is trying to set the screen, but you actually have to get stopped. He was moving on that play. And what creates that situation is really good defense by West. West makes it so difficult for Sebron to use the screen effectively. So the Wolfpack misses the front end of the one-on-one -on -one and then turns it over after they get the rebound. Right away, you can see how Curry has become the target for the Cardinals. It's going to be a foul on the floor. And Ross is going to pick up the foul. And Curry will actually be able to step to the free throw line as Louis Curry is in the bonus. <laughs> Curry has been able to do anything he wants on the inside. Ross just not really able to give him much resistance. It's a two-shot foul. Knocks down the first one. And here's tomorrow night's ACC Network Women's College Basketball Doubleheader at 6 Eastern, Kara Lawson, and the number 16 Duke Coast, Virginia Tech. They're led by center Elizabeth Kitley, who's averaging almost 20 points per game. Then Florida State squares off against Nail Fortner and number 15 Georgia Tech. You can always watch both games live on ESPN app. One app. One tap. Quick transition bucket for State, 71-59. Nice job by Helms. You know, you, you can get too conservative there. And when you have an open opportunity when the other team's pressing you, you have to make them pay for that press. Davis tried to force it on the there. end. Nice hands. And Sebron all the way to the other side. Can't get it to go, but draws the contact. So hopefully he can knock down the first free throw for NC State. Well, Sebron, that's where he is at his most effective. He gets the turnover and then just sets sail down the court. And once he gets going, he is just hard to stop. 
He is either going to score or he's going to get fouled. He's got a two. He's got two shots here. He has emerged in the second half, and there it is, the first free throw, made free throw for the Wolfpack. Well, in the first half, Angel, I thought when the Wolfpack was struggling, he really set the tone with his aggressiveness. He had four assists there during the big NC State run in the first half. So even though he wasn't scoring, I thought he was a big, big factor for the Wolfpack in the first half. But in the second half, his offense has come to the front. Nice stat line for Steve Brown, 12.7 rebounds and five assists. Faulkner forcing the situation on the inside. And he may just send State to the free throw line. And 73 is a magic number right now in the Louisville losses. And I was talking with Malik Williams and he just talked about how their defense was dropping off and what they needed to do differently. And that 73 mark, you can see how it goes against their favor. Well, Louisville has struggled at times offensively. They made some changes in the off season to try to juice up their offense. They felt like they, through the transfer portal, they got some three point shooters but it just hasn't worked out so far as planned. They are very good defensively, but the defense, what the defense does is it keeps you in the game. If you're gonna win, eventually you gotta put points on the board and Louisville has struggled to do that this evening. Well, how about Sebron though? Two points in the first half and as you mentioned, Merge as Curry is just one of those players who's not giving up as we're approaching that 90 second mark in the second half. I mean, you got to handle the ball now if you were the Wolfpack. Down 13. And you want to run some time off the clock, but you don't want to lose your aggressiveness. Sebron playing with the rock a bit. Dishes it off to Ross. Two on the shot clock. He's going to have to heave it. <laughs> he does pays <laughs> with the three. Well, that, that, that is a real break for North Carolina State because Sebron can't give up that ball to Ross at the end of the shot clock. The Wolfpack got a break there. Big time three for NC State, shooting only 32% from the three-point line in the season. Dan, it's a little bit different tonight. Now they shot the ball really well from beyond the arc. Helms got him going, and Terquavion Smith was fabulous. That time it was Cam Hayes. And Sebron just playing with it at this point. Another bucket at the rim. Is this an 18 point game? Curry with the rebound and finish. And at this point, you would assume that Louisville is just going to let this one run out. Or NC State, rather. So NC well, this is quite State. quite an effort by NC State. As time ticks off. And that'll do it. NC State moves to two and four in ACC play, nine and eight overall to give the Cardinals their first loss in the last four games at home and get things done at the KFC Young Center. So for Dan Bonner and the entire crew of Angel Bray, and we enjoyed covering this one for you. NC State completely dominated in this game. And they came behind Smith, Sebron, and Hellums. The big three, the trio that's at the top of the ACC in scoring points, and they took care of business. So we'll send it to the studio with Dalen Cuff and KJ Smith, see if they can break this one down. Big win for the Wolfpack.